Hey guys, it's Dale Walker at Whole Shot. Well, it's been a few weeks now since we, uh, I took the bike out for the uh, last uh, test and tune and uh, learned some stuff. Uh, still have the new bike blues, still, still fighting some shifting and some different things like that. But um, yeah, so this is uh, actually my computer blew up, so I'm finally alive again after about four weeks. So um, I'm going to do this little intro first, then I'll show you a couple of the passes, then I'm going to go over just a little bit of um, some updates I'm doing for uh, the final test and tune. They have a night thing coming up in about a, two weeks, August 13th. I'm not sure I'm going to go out there. Uh, I don't want to ride the spike in the dark. It's not too lit up good out there, but we'll see what happens with that. Otherwise, it's uh, in the mid-September, I think, second, third week. There's a two-day thing, so we'll get one more shot at making some laps on Rapsuki. So anyway, briefly, what happened is we got out to the track and... Uh, um, I have the solenoid shifter on it now. Like, like I said, that was off my Kendall ch uh, track chassis, and I had to kind of just mount it up, and it almost fit, and blah, 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 and I knew I had a little uh, limited adjustment. So first pass, uh, I just didn't waste burnouts, didn't anything like that. I just rolled it off the line, got on it to shift it through the gears, and it shifted through third, one shift to fourth. So then I came back, and... Um, and uh, I noticed a little bit of fuel seeping from the float bowls. So I took the carburetors clear apart, lowered the float level about a one and a half millimeters, had them all apart, and uh, made a slight adjustment on the shifter plunger and the solenoid. And uh, this is NA only just to go down the track, you know, type of deal. And uh, anyway, made a second pass and it shifted fine. Went through all the gears. Um, it's taller geared for the 28 inch tire now, so you know the ET isn't as good as it was before with the 26 on it, just rolling it on. But still went 950, 145, 96, 146. So then I decided, okay, let's make a nitrous pass. So anyway, tried to make one nitrous pass. Um, I have pretty darn small jets in it, kind of the smallest ones I used to run. And uh, so anyway, uh, got up there and uh, got on the stutter box and left the line and it shook the tire real bad. Then it hooked and then there's a little bump and it shook again and then it wouldn't shift the second gear. So I pulled in the clutch, clicked the motor off, coasted the whole way, only accelerated in first gear. And with all that crappy leave, it went a 128, 60 footer. So that probably would have been an 818, 815. 820, something like that, I imagine, even at this altitude of 4,500 feet. So uh, it's in there. I just got to get get it to make laps. So, um, yeah, it. Uh, I coasted the whole way, and 1,000 feet, it went 11 flat. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So And then just pulled off and towed back, and the day was done. So anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll show you some of the modifications I'm making for the next time out. And... Uh, and so on, but um, this is just a little intro. Let's get to just a couple of the passes and then I'll show you what I'm doing and then we'll see you on the next video uh, when we get out one last time. All right, thanks for watching.
guys. Well, we're here at the track. Had to make some adjustments on the uh, push button the solenoid shifter. So finally got it to shift all the gears. It's geared for about 175 or 7 right now. And uh, so I just rode it off the line real easy, rolled into it. Finally got down through there, normally aspirated with 953, 145, and it's about 96 degrees right now. But got a little bit of dribble coming out, so I took the carburetors apart and lowered, I just lowered all the float levels about two millimeters, just below the gasket surface. Um, the plastic bowls look like they're gonna work. It was probably the vent to the tank that was a surging problem. So I'm dropping the float level back down. I don't want any fuel seeping at all. So anyway, hopefully I get it together and we can make one uh, one pass. <laughs> Okay guys, let's go over a few updates I'm going to do um, before the last test session we got coming up, uh, I don't know, in a few weeks or possibly early September. So like I was talking about, we uh, overpowered the track even with the tiny jets in it. Um, I can back it down some more um, and I'll lower the RPM launch, another 1000 RPM. Um, and I softened up the clutch. Um, as far as the shifting goes, uh, like I was talking about, uh, my solenoid unit came right off my Kendall chassis and the bracket was different here. It was tipped up more. I had no choice but make the lever arm uh, a little shorter, which obviously takes your uh, leverage away. Um, I ended up at the track having to have the plunger almost all the way in and it still shifted it But man, I didn't have any adjustment left. So I took a prototype plate I pulled it off the bracket on the back that's clamped to the frame. It's a double shell bracket back there two-piece Barely see the top one right there. I think And there's a cap that bolts on the bottom and it clamps around the tube perfectly and then you can slide it slide it fore or aft Anyway, I made a new bracket. I took a bracket, two bolts bolted to that mount, um, center punch, transfer punched one hole, then tipped it in a slightly downhill angle. So now I'm going to go ahead and lengthen this again, three eighths of an inch. It end up being about like that, okay? Because where I want this thing to start is about that far, sticking out when it's in gear. Say it's in first, then ratchets back. So when it goes all the way in, when I adjust it, I'll have it about like that, holding it down in gear, like you shift the second. And then trust me, this thing will pull it. And then it bangs on the backing plate. <clears throat> and then it takes the load off the shift forks, kind of a little protector. But uh, this thing, with it sticking out about a half inch, starts at about 50 pounds of pull. And when it bottoms in and hits, it's between 80 and 90 pounds. That's very strong. I took this solenoid and the company developed it with me years ago. This is the power shift to three I actually have a patent on. And they uh, were able to pump up the field windings in that to get me that more, much more strength in the same housing. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, yeah, the shifter rotating plate in here. It's a really good system, but with the Robinson gears I got in here, they got quite a bit of back cut on them, and uh, there's not enough. When I get into the horsepower with the bottle, first to second, 
there's so much load on it it won't let it turn it enough to pull it off the little pin and get the ground to kill the motor so I'm bypassing that I'm going with my power shifter 2 kill box um, I had another kill box with just relays that would kill it through the shift with the plate but uh, what we're doing now is I got my adjustable kill on here. I made a couple boxes up. This one's going to have a pretty long kill available. And I've got it tied right into the button. So when I push this button and the solenoid triggers, that's exactly when the Power Shifter 2 box is going to be getting the kill. So instead of loading up the tranny and not letting it come out and get the kill, it should kill it. Okay, so. I've got the longest available kill in the box, and I can dial it down uh, in milliseconds to make it a shorter kill, but I'm going to start out real conservative, even if it pops between shifts and stuff. And hopefully it shifts, gets out there, and uh, you know, gets in second gear and then goes. Normally aspirated, the other system worked fine, making a couple hundred horsepower. Um, but as soon as I lay into it, even with a tiny load with the cylinder head, I bet it's making... 80 to 90 horsepower more so yeah I blew through the tire shook the tire um, like I already told you and uh, and then it wind shift a second um, I backed out of it right away and just shut the motor off and uh, it went a 128 60 footer um, this thing has run the best of a 113 back in the day and uh, but uh, the track out here won't handle it. And then there's a little bump um, that I'll point out in the, that, that I already pointed out in the video. So um, anyway, if, if I can get through the bump, I'm going to stay in the right lane. That's kind of what Lisa can take pictures of and videos of. And uh, <clears throat> if I can make it get through the bump, uh, that's what I'll shoot for. If not, I'll get to the left lane and do more testing there. I'm going to put my lightweight sprocket back on it. Really, I need... Yeah, probably two or three teeth more, but I'm not going there yet. I'm going to turn down the power. Um, I just softened up the clutch. This is the old style MRE, just single stage lock up. You do it with the springs and how much weight you run on the on the fingers here. But over time, without buttons built into this clutch hat pressure plate, they call it. See what it does to it. But that has about 170 passes on it, so. Uh, and they're about seven millimeters thick in that area. It's still safe. Problem is they superseded the part. I found one back east, brand new, in the baggie. Ordered it, and uh, they they made a they updated, superseded the part, put these holes in them. I don't know why they did that. There was lightning holes, or to let oil get out of the clutch more. Don't ask me. Luckily, I had another old motor, and it had one of the originals. It was cherry. I just cleaned it up yesterday. Um, so at least I got one. Yeah, I'm thinking possibly of machining some, uh, if I stick with this and don't put like a two, two stage lockup or something on it, but I can make this thing work. So, but what I'm thinking of doing is possibly machining some, uh, 70, 75 T6 buttons that kind of press fit in here and then weld them up. That's just an idea I have because they'll be a lot harder than this cast material and they'll last long. So we'll see down the road what the heck I do. So what I had, since there's six total springs, I had three staggered, one stock, one Barnett heavier, staggered, you know, three and three. So now I put all stock springs in it. I'm still going to leave them one little nut and bolt on three of the weights. And uh, like I say, we're going to lower the RPM down. Uh, it's launching pretty high, about 7,500. That's how I used to launch this thing, and it did it before, but this track out here won't hold it. So I'm going to knock it down to 6,500. I'm going to go way down in the jets. I mean way down. Way baby jets. I'm talking like 14s. And uh, we'll start there and just see what it can do. But anyway, that's the deal with the clutch. I'm about to button that back up. And um, carburetors are still a little funky. It sounds pretty shitty out of the burnout, excuse my French. But it's really hot right now. I mean, right now in our shop, right this second, it's, uh, geez, dying out here. There it is. It's 100 degrees.
Well guys, I decided to drop the pan. I haven't dropped the oil pan since I got the bike running. Always a good idea, make sure there's no uh, indicators of something seriously going on in the motor. So I just dropped the pan and this is what the oil looks like. There's no big chunks. Looks beautiful. Here's the pickup unit and it's still dribbling. Luckily my gasket's stuck on there. And here's the pan here. So it had some, uh, you know, grayish slime in there, metal. Uh, no chunks of metal, no nothing. Uh, it was more uh, probably some aluminum from the, the clutch hat wearing more. <clears throat> and also, uh, this motor has fresh pistons in it, and uh, I molly coated the pistons, so that stuff always has to wear off, you know, the molly black. And uh, some of it wears and it just stays on some of the high points and stuff still helps, but it gets in the oil. So always a good idea to check these motors like that when they're brand new. Make sure there's no little chunks of metal or something you can identify that's going to explode later. Um, as you can see, I milled off the fins to give it more clearance. One more thing, let's take a look at the... Uh, oil pump pickup screen if we can get in there. I'll have to turn the camera sideways but uh, motor looks good under here. Yeah, I'm going to turn it sideways now. And it looks really really good. I already kind of looked at it. I just wanted to show you. In there. No chunks, no nothing. Really clean. So we're in pretty good shape. And for those of you that may wonder uh, what oil I run, I run a <coughs> Mobile One 1550 car oil. That's the non-energy conserving. It's loaded with, still has a lot of zinc in it. Doesn't hurt any clutches. And then I also run X1R. This is my uh, favorite additive I've been running and used to sell this product. Then it got pretty expensive to get here. But um, I might take this on again in the future. But I tested this all through the 90s and man my wrist pin life like quadrupled and uh, piston scuffing uh, down on the skirts and stuff so what I do is when I change oil I'll put 8 ounces in it first couple times and then I'll cut it back to 4 ounces uh, for uh, 4 quarts but uh, it penetrates into the metal and uh, it's real slick. I've run it in some of my road race motors and that we're having shifting problems jumping out of gear and it cured it where I didn't have to take the motor apart. So I'm a true believer in it. Doesn't hurt the clutch either. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you I've got the new sprocket on. Uh, it's basically still a 45 tooth. I just wanted the lighter sprocket back on it. Um, anyway, I've got, got a new uh, sprocket specialist still has the Cosman hub uh sizes and so on so um just got that installed yesterday it looks pretty sano i wish i still had a gold one but they don't do it in gold anymore it's black anodized 7075 t6 aluminum so today i'm going to uh play with the carburetors a little bit i got the motor buttoned up gonna put oil back in the motor fire the thing up uh, i'm gonna put it in first gear and try to adjust the clutch switch again because the clutch hat changed the throw on the the play on the inner cable just a tiny bit and I got to double check that. Okay guys I'm making a new uh, bracket for the solenoid. I cut the nose off of it that I'm no longer using. This is in case I ever want to put a micro switch on there that uh, triggers it differently but anyway that shortened up and cleaned up and at the proper angle and there is a mess of madness. That means I'm making progress. I've got this little bracket I made. Okay, let me show you in a minute here. Okay, so I made my little stainless bracket here. That's what the shifter clevis, machine clevis, is going to be pinned to. Uh, it didn't have any solid stock, so I just made some aluminum spacers. And it's all trimmed off. Pretty clean. So anyway, I already had this all on here. Yep, that's where it goes. See the little dot? Okay. So let me move forward and I'll show you the next step. Okay guys, I got the uh, 
solenoid all buttoned up, mounted up, and adjustment enough for baseline at the track. Um, I'll show you here. I just made a little, put a little vacuum line over the cable just to protect it from like trailers and things. To make a little spacer for my clevis here. There it is, all bolted up. So basically, when you push the shifter and it goes fully in gear, you want the plunger still sticking out mm, an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch. Okay, let me grab my flashlight. Uh, the later model, I actually put a new solenoid on it, and I'm going to keep the other one for a backup. But I put a hole in the back. That lets the air release, because when the piston inside pushes so fast, it's trying to push the air around the outside of the housing. So I added a hole, which is better. Anyway, so with it sticking out about 3 16 to an eighth, it's still got an air gap in the back about an eighth of an inch okay so when it's fully shifted it will still pull everything and then the piston will hit on the backing plate inside and that takes the load off the shift uh, forks and uh, it buries it at about 85 pounds so I already have it where the window of the gears are safe to shift at one time I got it between I think fourth third and fourth and it shifts real smooth. The, dig, the gear dogs aren't going to hit and bend the shift fork. So let me turn the ignition on and let me turn the power shifter on and we'll do one little test shift right here, right now. You ready? That's it. Alright, well this wraps up the Ratsuki updates. We will see you out at the track here coming up here, geez, either in a couple of weeks or in about a month. So until then, please subscribe. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're back. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.